Okay, so you're smart enough to know that YouTube ads are a huge opportunity. You know there's a lot of money to be made with YouTube ads, but you haven't started your campaigns yet because it seems real complicated and real difficult to set things up. And I don't blame you. There's a lot of people in your situation that don't know how to set up YouTube ad campaigns that just never got started. In this video, I'm gonna make the whole process simple and easy for you to set up your first campaigns. In this video, we're not gonna to talk too much about how to make your videos or how to set up your YouTube channel. I've got other videos on the channel for that. In this video, we're gonna dive a little deeper into how to set up your ad campaigns themselves. Okay, so let's dive into it. You got a YouTube channel, you got some videos you wanna advertise. How do you get started? The first thing that you have to know is that YouTube ads are managed through Google Ads. Google owns YouTube. So what you need to do as the first step is go to ads.google.com, this website you're seeing on the screen here. All you're gonna do is you're gonna click the Start Now button here, as I just did. Um, and then you'll sign in with your Google Ads account. Now, if you already have a Google Ads account, this whole process will be simple and easy. On the screen right now, you're seeing the process of signing up for Google Ads, what you'll need to do to sign up. Uh, we're speeding this process up a little bit because you just fill out a few basic forms, real simple and easy, but that's basically what you do to set up your account. The next step, once you have your account set up, is that you're gonna wanna add your billing information. On the screen right now, you can see an example of that being done. Again, we're speeding this up because that's real simple and easy. Put in the credit card and you're good to go. All right. So you got your account. I've created a new account for the purpose of making this training video to show you what you will see when you have a totally new account. So you have your account, you got your billing information, but no campaigns yet. The first step is gonna be to make an ad campaign. Now, before we go into that, I'm gonna go a little bit into what a campaign is, what an ad group is, and what the difference between those two things is. In Google Ads, the way that your campaigns are organized is in two different levels. First, you have your ad campaigns. This is a group of ad groups that share certain settings. Uh, they share optimization settings, they share geographic targeting, the device targeting. Basically, it's a group of ad groups is a campaign. An ad group, on the other hand, lies within the campaign. An ad group is essentially a group of ads that shares targeting. So basically, your ads go inside the ad group, a group of ad groups together is a campaign. All right. So now you got that, we're gonna make our first campaign. What you wanna do is you wanna click on this plus button right here and click on new campaign. So now you're gonna see this screen right here and you got a bunch of different choices. So what I want you to do is click on this last one, create a campaign without a goals guidance. And then I want you to click on video because we're making YouTube campaigns here. Uh, so this will basically give you the option to create any type of campaign you want rather than getting the Google Ads recommendations. And now that you know the right type of campaign to make, this is the appropriate option for people in the know like yourselves. So let's go through the different options here. Uh, so you can create a custom video campaign. This is essentially a type of campaign where you choose later on what type of campaign you'll be making. Another type of campaign you can make is a non-skippable in-stream campaign, this campaign type that I'm mousing over right now. This type of campaign is basically short, 15-second, non-skippable ads. I don't recommend you ever use this campaign type, and we'll dive deeper into that in a little while as to why you shouldn't use those type of ads. Uh, just to summarize everything, you can probably do a lot more in two minutes or three minutes for nearly any type of business than you can in 15 seconds. After that, you can see what I'm mousing over right now. The next option is outstream ads. These are where you show ads to people outside of YouTube on phones and tablets. Now, this format can sometimes be useful for advanced advertisers, and especially for advertisers who are brand-oriented for bigger companies. Again, though, I do not recommend you use this as your first campaign type, just because this is a little bit more of an advanced type of campaign. The next type of campaign will be to drive conversions. Now, this is almost certainly the type of campaign that you wanna use. This is what's called a CPA or conversion optimized campaign. 
Now, the reason why you wanna use this campaign type is that this campaign uses Google's learning algorithms to actually go out and optimize your campaigns for you and to find the ideal prospects for your ads. Now, nobody knows exactly how these algorithms work, but they work like crazy. They are very effective and much more effective than other campaign types. If you don't know where to start, chances are this is probably where you should start, drive conversions. The next option that we have here is ad sequence campaigns. Now, ad sequence campaigns are one of my favorite campaign types. This is basically a type of campaign where it's not optimized for conversions, it's not using those learning algorithms, but they have a different advantage. They show a series of ads in a defined order. So they see the first ad, then the second ad, then the third ad, and they don't see your ads in a random order like they might in most campaigns. Uh, what you need to know for right now though is if you're setting up your first campaign, don't choose an ad sequence campaign. This is a more advanced type of campaign which isn't suitable for your first campaign. Finally, we have a shopping campaign. This is where you promote products from your store using a merchant feed or a data feed where Google dynamically serves the products that it thinks that the prospect is most likely to be interested in. And this can be a very powerful feature too. Now, let's say that you do have an e-commerce store and let's say that you have a hundred different products, but the customer has only visited the product page for one or two of those products. Google knows this and it will show a call to action for those products specifically. Or let's say that the person has been showing interest in one or two products on a competitor's website. Google knows that too, and it will be likely to show calls to action for similar products on your website. So this is a very powerful type of campaign. If you do have an e-commerce store and you have a little bit of tech savvy, you might wanna set this up as your first campaign type. For most people though, I recommend drive conversions, real simple and real effective. There are also two different types of campaigns that aren't shown on this screen, but which you can create with Google Ads with this custom video campaign option. The first type is a CPV campaign. CPV stands for cost per view. You don't pay every time your ad is shown, rather you pay it every time your ad is fully viewed. So what is a view on YouTube? What counts as a view and what doesn't? If somebody watches 30 seconds of your ad, that counts as a view. Or if they interact with your ad, usually by clicking through to your website at any point in the video, that will also count as a view. So only if someone clicks through to your site or if they watch a full 30 seconds of your ad, you get charged. Now, CPV campaigns can sometimes be the best way to start off with if you haven't set up conversion tracking on your website yet. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, conversion tracking means you put a little piece of code on your website and it tracks when somebody signs up to your email list or signs up for a call or buys one of your products. Conversion tracking is an essential feature for Google Ads and if you're serious about YouTube ad campaigns, you gotta set this up. So I would recommend that you set that up from the beginning if you can't do that. If not, if you just wanna get started as fast as possible, you can get started with a CPV campaign. Just select that custom video campaign option and then you'll get that option for the CPV campaign later on. Now, the last type of ad campaign, which you're not seeing on the screen here, but what you create with this custom video campaign option is video discovery campaigns. Video discovery campaigns are a campaign type that I personally love. Many advertisers don't use them at all, but I think they have some really good advantages. Video discovery campaigns, when used right, can drive really good ROI. Because most people don't use video discovery campaigns, they're missing out on that opportunity to get that inventory. Now, I think that's a mistake because if, let's say, you have a channel that you advertise on that's very profitable, you could get 50% more or 75% more ad impressions by going into video discovery campaigns. Not only this, but video discovery campaigns are excellent for driving engagement on your channel. By engagement, I mean it's excellent at getting people to subscribe to your channel, excellent at getting people to like, share your videos, and interact in all sorts of ways. Now, that's very important for the long term. That may not make you money tomorrow, but in the long term, it's gonna be building your channel, which is a valuable asset that makes all of your advertising work better. The more engaged your channel is, the better your advertising is gonna work in the long term. Now, I do not recommend you use video discovery campaigns as your first campaign type. Even though they are better for driving engagement, they're a little bit more complicated to set up. The reason for that is, in order to make a video discovery campaign work, you need more than a good video. You also need a good thumbnail image and a good headline. 
If you're tuning in here, if you're reading my book, I show you how to do that. But it takes a little bit of training to put together a video discovery campaign. So for your first campaign, I recommend that you stick with drive conversions. If you don't have conversion tracking set up, get it set up as soon as possible. And for now, you can use a CPV campaign. Okay, so let's say you're smart. You got your conversion tracking set up. So you click on drive conversions. This is a new account, so I don't have it set up. But in my real accounts, I do have conversion tracking set up. So if you do have your conversion tracking set up, click on that drive conversions options. In my real Google Ads accounts, I always have conversion tracking set up, but this is a dummy account with nothing in it and I haven't set up conversion tracking yet. You can see if you don't have it set up yet, it says that you need to do that before you can create a drive conversions campaign. So for the purposes of just this example here, I'll show you how to set up a CPV campaign. So click on custom video campaign and then click continue. Okay, so now you're gonna see this screen right here where you see all the different options to set up your campaign and I'm gonna show you exactly which options that you should choose. The first thing is that you need to give your campaign a name. Now, a lot of people think this doesn't matter because this is something the customer will never see. However, the way that you name your campaigns is eventually gonna become very important. The reason for that is you're not just gonna have one campaign. If you're doing this right, you're gonna scale and you'll eventually have many campaigns. Some of my accounts have 200, 300, 400 different campaigns. And these are for bigger clients, but you'll probably have at least 10 or 20 or 30 different campaigns. So the first thing that you have to do is give your campaign a name. A lot of people think this doesn't really matter, but it's actually very important. The reason for that is later on, I'm gonna show you some more advanced data analysis techniques. And in order to use these techniques, your campaigns need to follow a meaningful naming convention. What I mean by a naming convention is that campaigns are all named in a standard way. So if you search for a certain word, then that shows up in your search and you know how that type of campaign is doing. What I usually do is I name my campaigns, first of all, by the targeting type, second of all, by the geographic targeting in that campaign, third of all, by the demographic targeting in that campaign, and then fourth, if there's any special details that are unusual about that campaign, I'll either put that in brackets or I'll put that at the end of the campaign name. Let's say, for example, you wanna see how your video discovery campaigns are doing. What you could do is just search for a campaign name contains video discovery and you can see it at a glance. So very important that you follow a naming convention. Here's the naming convention that I use. First of all, I use the creative type for the campaign. So the, the creative type that I'm using here is in-stream cost for view. Again, you should be using in-stream CPA, but this is just for demonstration purposes. This is a type of creative that we're using, and that's the first thing in the campaign name. I usually use this little pipe symbol that you're seeing to divide it, so that way it's easily apparent uh, when one section of the name is divided from another. Next, after that, I use the type of targeting that this campaign uses. If you've read the 15 steps, you know that I recommend organizing your campaigns by targeting type, that I found that campaigns work a little bit more efficiently that way. For this campaign, for the first campaign, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up what's called a remarketing campaign. So that's the targeting type we're using. So that's the second part of our campaign name, remarketing. If I wanted to filter campaigns for remarketing, I could see at a glance how my remarketing campaigns are doing. The next part of this campaign name is gonna be the geographic targeting. The geographic targeting that you choose is an important decision. We'll go into that a little more in detail later. Just for the purposes of this campaign though, I'm gonna say US and Canada, just using those abbreviations that you see on screen right there. Next, you wanna put in something for your demographic targeting. For the purposes of this example, I'll say that we're targeting men from the ages of 18 to 64. And again, this geographic targeting, this demographic targeting may not be the right specific targeting to use for your business, but this is just an example of how you would name the campaigns with the targeting that you choose. All right, so bidding strategy, maximum CPV. Um, I'm gonna keep it on this one and you can see with these custom video campaigns, I also have the option for target CPM. Never ever recommend using target CPM. Go with maximum CPV, works better. So your next option here is gonna be to put in your campaign budget. 
So when you're first starting off, what you wanna do is put in the budget that you're comfortable with testing new things up. You wanna put in a, probably a pretty small budget to start off with. Once you get things profitable, then you can scale things up. Uh, what I would recommend to start off with is starting off with at least $10 per day. If you can't do that, just start off with whatever you can afford. If you can do a little bit more, then I recommend starting off with $25 per day. So for this example, I will start off with $10 per day. Um, now, you can also see there's different budget types. You can also set a campaign total budget or a daily budget. Uh, the $10 per day was a daily budget that I was previously referring to, but there is also an option for a campaign total budget. I never recommend that you use a campaign total budget. The reason for that is if a campaign is profitable, you usually would never want to turn it off. Campaign total budgets can be useful in some situations. Uh, for example, if you're running a live event, you wanna advertise the event, but then after you've held the event, you gotta pause the advertising until the next year or the next event. In situations like that, it's sometimes appropriate. If you're having a one-time sale, say a Black Friday sale, it might be appropriate for a Black Friday sale. Sometimes it can make sense, but this is your first campaign. So keep it simple, use a daily budget and not campaign total. Next, you have the options to select your campaign start date and your campaign end date. Uh, you can see here that I have the start date being today and there is no end date. Um, again, I recommend that you do not give your campaign an end date unless there is a reason to. Let's say if the campaign doesn't do that well, in that case, you can simply pause the campaign or turn it off. But if it does do well, you wanna keep it going forever or as long as you possibly can. So make sure you remember that, no end date. Okay. So the next option that you're gonna to get to choose is your network. You can see when I expand this out here, you have three options, YouTube search results, YouTube videos, and video partners on the display network. Now, YouTube search results is only applicable to video discovery ads. So for most campaign types, it really doesn't matter whether you select that or not. It just keep things clear so I know that this is not running on YouTube search. I'm going to deselect that option like you see here. So you see the remaining two options are YouTube videos and video partners on the display networks. YouTube videos are exactly what it sounds like. Videos on YouTube or embedded YouTube videos on other sites. Video partners on the display network are an advanced option that I recommend that experienced marketers test out. Basically, these are YouTube ads that show on non-YouTube videos. For example, foxnews.com is one site that typically runs these types of ads. You will see ads just like you do on YouTube on foxnews.com, and there are many, many other partner sites that run these types of ads. So for your first campaign, I recommend deselecting this option and running on YouTube videos only. The reason for that is that it makes it a little bit more complicated, and usually YouTube itself is a little bit more profitable. Video partners on the display network are good for getting greater scale, but when you're spending 10 or $25 a day, no need for video partners. So I will deselect this option. The next setting that you have to choose is your language. And this can be important. You can see here by default, I'm running ads on videos in all languages. And that's not very good, especially if I was targeting more countries. The reason for that is if your ads are in English or whatever language your ads are in, you wanna make sure you're targeting people who are browsing the internet in that language. If you show your ad to a person that doesn't understand the language in your ad, obviously that's a recipe for disaster. So my ads are in English, so I select English. Okay, so I got English selected here. Next, you're gonna choose your locations or what's usually referred to as your geographic targeting. You can see here that it defaults to the country that you're in, in my case, the United States, and I'm gonna show you how to use some other location targeting options. So if you just wanna target the United States and Canada, very simple to do that, just select the option that you're seeing on screen right now. If you wanna target other locations, you're gonna target enter another location. So if I wanted to do it this way, I just type in Canada and I type in United States. There you go, it can be that simple. Now, when you're a little bit more advanced, you can click on this advanced search option that I'm mousing over right now. That's gonna give you options to do things like radius targeting, where let's say if you have a store, you could target people in a 20 mile radius around your store's address. Or let's say that you're running a political campaign. You could target a certain congressional district. 
or let's say you're an ad agency and you have all kinds of advanced data, you could target people by zip code or by county or all types of different ways. Um, for your first campaign though, keep it simple. Don't use advanced search. Just type in the location that you want to advertise. All right, so I have selected Canada and the United States. My location targeting is set. The next option that I have to choose is the inventory type. And this is what you see on screen right now. Now, this is kind of a difficult decision because Google does not disclose exactly what each inventory type is. They give you some general guidelines as to what each inventory type is. Um, expanded inventory does not actually include everything. There's some things which are what's called demonetized or they can't show any ads at all. Uh, for example, if you steal somebody's YouTube video and re-upload it, or if there's copyright issues, usually that won't show any ads. If there's murder happening in the video or some type of horrific violence, if there's um, explicit sexuality, basically if there's something real fucked up happening, you can't show ads on it at all. So that's not what expanded inventory is. Expanded inventory though, will show your ads on types of inventory that are a little bit more controversial. For example, political content. It'll show on a little bit more political content. Violent content, not hardcore violence like I was just talking about, but uh, say for example, fist fighting or a little bit milder violence. Milder sexuality, milder profanity, things like that will be the expanded inventory type. Google recommends the standard inventory type. The standard inventory type takes away some of that more controversial content. You'll still see some very mild violence, very mild profanity, um, but very little political content. And basically this is a more restricted inventory type. The reason why Google defaults to this option is that a lot of bigger companies get mad if their ad runs on even one YouTube video that's even a little bit controversial. Next, you have the limited inventory type. This is a type of inventory I recommend you never use. This is very strictly limited. Your ads will not show on anything that's even a little bit controversial. So what inventory type should you use? The correct choice is expanded inventory. This option that I'm mousing over right now. And here's why I feel this way. First of all, I've done a lot of tests on this and I've seen that expanded inventory campaigns usually perform better than standard inventory campaigns and far better than limited inventory campaigns. Now, a lot of people with expanded inventory campaigns are concerned about this because after all, your ads will be showing on thousands and thousands of different videos. You can't watch each video, so maybe it's showing on something a little bit controversial. In my view though, I don't think that's gonna damage your brand. Again, all of the real, real bad stuff has been taken out totally. You're not gonna show up next to any murder content or anything like that. It's gonna be shown next to things that are just a little bit controversial. Furthermore, people watching ads understand that you're not picking out the YouTube videos individually like you would if you're advertising on TV. They understand that you're just advertising on YouTube and that you're reaching the person. You're not really advertising on the video. So for that reason, I always, always recommend expanded inventory. The next option that you have to choose is excluded types and labels. This is an option that's mostly deprecated, meaning that it's kind of being phased out and pretty soon you won't even see it anymore. For now though, it's still here. So while it's still here, here's what you wanna do. Click on this to expand it out like you're seeing right now. And you wanna make sure that none of this is selected especially if you chose standard inventory that's more than restrictive enough. You can see here, content not yet labeled is checked by default. You wanna uncheck that. Again, serve your ads to the widest possible audience. So those are your campaign settings. I know it's a bunch of different things, but trust me, once you're into this, once you're doing this, it'll just be like clockwork. Everything will be real simple. To make things simpler in the future, you can also load the settings from a previous campaign. So all you do, you load up your campaign settings, and then you already have it set to go. So real easy. So here's the next step, making your ad group and making your ad. So you see the option to do it right here. What I recommend though is clicking on what I'm mousing over right now, skip ad group and ad creation, parentheses, advanced. Now, even if you're not advanced, still click on that option because you're about to get advanced from what I'm about to show you. So you can see your campaign won't run until you create your ad group. That's okay because it's a little bit easier and a little bit better to do it the way I'm about to show you. So I double check everything, Canada, United States, my ads are running on English videos, maximum CPV, expanded inventory, I'm all good. So I continue the campaign.
All right, so that is your guide to setting up your first YouTube ad campaign. Now, to finish setting up this first campaign, you'll also need to set up your first ad group and some ads within that ad group. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in part two of this video. Click the link down below in the description to watch part two. That's gonna be especially important to watch too because I'm gonna run you through all the different Google Ads targeting options. These are really important. It can get kind of complicated if you don't know what you're doing. But in that next video, I show you how to simplify all the targeting options and exactly which targeting options to use in your first campaign. Uh, so make sure to watch part two of the video, which I link to in the description down below. And if you want a complete guide to making YouTube ads work for you, making profits from YouTube campaigns, check out my book, The 15 Steps to Profitable YouTube Marketing. I show you everything you need to know start to finish to make money from YouTube ads. The book's got five-star reviews and it sells for $19.95 on Amazon, but on my website, you can get a copy for free. So check out the book now, leave me a comment, like the video if it helped you out, and share it with your friends if it did help you out. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in part two. Oh,